to the channel hope you're all keeping well well following on from last weekend's vlog where I photographed the Lincolnshire tide and time bell over at Mablethorpe Beach I just thought I'd quickly run over the edit and it is a really quick edit because it was quite bright yet the the tide bell was so backlit and, and so underexposed I was able to to make the most of those conditions and really overexpose the frame itself so I just thought I've had, I've had a few questions by the way about how I, how I came to the final results. So I just thought I'd run over the edit and it is really quick. But before I do, obviously I posted the video on a few different platforms and the arts director of the Tide and Time Bell, a gentleman called Biff Vernon got in touch and uh, had a really nice conversation with him and we went into a bit of details about why it's there, how it got there, when it was built. And he sent me a link to a video explaining all this and chatting to the designer and, and you know the architect and the, the guys that built the bell and it's a really interesting video. I'll link that in the description below. Do go and check it out and uh, yeah Biff Vernon, thanks ever so much if you're watching Biff for uh, getting in contact, just gave me a lot of information about behind the scenes and about the bell itself so I'm sure if any of you were interested in the images last week, I'm sure it'd be of interest to you to go and watch that. So yeah, the link to the video on the Tide and Time Bell and all, all the, the information about it is in the description below. So yeah, head over and uh, go and check that out. But uh, yeah, thanks again, Biff, for getting in touch. Really, really interesting. And uh, as, you, as you'll agree from seeing the images last week, really interesting structure. It's fantastic design. So uh, yeah, chuffed to bits with that. But anyway, right, let's get back to the edit. I've got the screen recorder going. So as you can see here, because it was so bright that day, yet, like I said earlier, the bell and the construction was, the subject was so backlit, I was able to almost totally lose the background and the sea itself on a long exposure. I think it was about two minutes, was it? Something like that. But, um, so here we are, here's, here's, here's the, the raw image. As you can see, you can just see the horizon line there of the sea. So I think this is about two minute exposure, something like that. But uh, let's have a look. We'll have a quick look at the the, uh, the settings actually. Let's have a look. So I was on 200 mil, 47 seconds. So not quite, not quite a minute, but yeah, 47 seconds. Obviously in bulb, manual, manual focus, 200 mil ISO 100. So yeah, so that's that's the image, and then obviously back into there. There it is. And I say you can just see. So there wasn't much to do to it really, so I'm going to go Shift Command A, which is Camera Raw Filter. And so here we are, so I always work in. So for a start, I wanted to try and lose as much of this horizon as I could to blend it all in to make it all look one minimalist white backdrop. So just take the exposure up a bit, but I'm going to bring the contrast back just to bring that bell back in and you can see that the sea has almost disappeared already. And that's basically the edit, nearly done. And then highlights, I just took the highlights up a bit. Now I've just got to be careful, if we just zoom in a bit on that. I don't want to lose this edge here, which I am beginning to do if I take the highlights up. Just a little bit, so I'm just going to take them up a bit, but I'm going to take the shadows down a bit, look. But, bringing them shadows back down, I'm still not, let's go out again, I'm still not bringing the C back if you like, so it is getting quite minimalist already. And I think I played with the blacks a bit, you know, just to... Now what I did do... Now obviously the dehaze tool is such a powerful slider. If I slide that across, you can see the C coming back, look. So I took the dehaze down a little bit, just a little bit, about minus 10, something like that. And again, the clarity is a really strong slider. I think I gave it about, I don't know, let's just zoom in. I don't want to go too grainy. Let's just zoom in and take that clarity up a bit. And you can see it really does bring the detail out. 
in the image itself in the in the wood there and the and the, the bell so I'm going to take it I always tend to go past where I want to be and then just come back a bit so that's a bit too much so I'm just going to bring it back a bit so let's go let's go plus 50 on that and then again you can play with the textures but that will give you a bit of grain and as you can see on on that I think it's stainless steel I am losing the detail in the edges here but I'm not overly concerned about that too much so let's just take the mess about with that texture slider a bit let's go plus plus 10 something like that come on laptop there we are and that's basically it that's all I did I mean you can see that the C's totally disappeared I think there might just be a little bit there look so I'm just going to go into my whites again let's just go into highlights again and just see if we can lose that C a bit and the whites now obviously it is affecting that stainless steel but now look, I think I'm sure let's have a look at that I think that line, this, this, the sea horizon has totally gone now, looks totally disappeared, I'm sure it has, yeah, it's gone. And that is basically it. And then I think I just might have just brought the levels down a bit. Just to give it that rustic look, something like that. And that was basically it. Obviously this is the colour version. Just I can send that to monochrome, you know, just by going Command U. Slide that across there, Command U, take the saturation right off and you've got your monochrome image. But I, I quite actually like it in colour. The more I've been looking at it the last few days, the more I like it in colour. So we'll just leave it as colour like that. I know it is meant to be a monochrome image. And then the final thing that I did was just give it a square crop. So into the crop tool, we'll go one by one, and then just bring it down. I think it is, I think, I've been looking at the image, studying it quite a lot this last few days, and I think, the bell is at a slight angle, or I didn't quite compose it right at the right angle, and the bell is just slightly off from, as you can see from, if I zoom it in a bit, if we're looking at this here, if I was this, the, the central hoop, if you like, or the joiner, if I was to just bring that level like that, it does take the bell slightly off. And I think it's the bell that my eye is drawn to anyway. So I left the top edge of the bell square, if you like. So I did just take it round a little bit, something like that. And then, I don't know, I can't remember the exact crop I dug, but just, just get it. All I'm looking at there is these gaps here, making sure they're about right, and then making sure that the bell itself is sort of central in the frame, really, something like that, I think. Let's have a look at that and see how that looks. Yeah, perhaps just take a little bit down from there. Something like that. I think that was better before. Yeah, it's better before. And that is it. That is the edit. So because it was so bright, like I say, I could really overexpose everything. And I was so lucky that I wasn't overexposing that bill, that, that bell. Yes, the edges, I've lost the edges a bit. As you can see, the edge here is just beginning to disappear, and obviously the edge on the, the stainless steel clamps there, or whatever they are at the top of the, the woodland, the wood woodland, the wood construction, then the, the bars, if you like. But not overly fussed about that. And I say, if you go into mono, doesn't doesn't really matter anyway. So, and that is it. That that is the edit in a nutshell. Again, just Shift Command A brings up your raw camera filter, camera raw filter, and then you've got all these sliders that you can work on. But yeah, because the conditions really suited the subject, I was able to, let's just take it, take it back to colour. And that is basically it. Yeah, because it was so bright, I could uh, I could really use all, all the, the conditions to my advantage to get that minimalist, that minimalist look. And that is basically the edit. So uh, yeah, just a quick one today, guys, because a bit of great news, fantastic news. My sport work is back. And obviously I was at a game, my first game yesterday, uh, I was at Nottingham Forest versus Bournemouth. Bournemouth, believe it or not, where I used to photograph. But uh, yeah, PA got in touch a couple of weeks ago and said, am I, am I free to, to cover a few games in this area? So I was absolutely delighted, absolutely chuffed. And of course, 
sold my kit back at Christmas, didn't I? Thinking I was never going to get back in the in the sports store again, if you like. A, because of COVID and the way things were, but B, because I'd moved up to Lincolnshire and this is really someone else's patch. So to get offered some shifts again, absolutely thrilled to bits. I'm over the moon. So yeah, I was at a game yesterday, so couldn't couldn't go out and uh, film a vlog of such. So I just thought I'd run. And I've had a few questions on this Tide and Time Bell anyway, so thought I'd run through the edit quick. So so yeah, once I get my eye back in and, and get all the dust off, I'll uh, I'll try and film a vlog from a, a game in the next in the next month or two. But uh, we'll see we'll see how many shifts come. At the minute, I've just been guaranteed obviously another two shifts in August, but hopefully going forward, uh, my sports work should come back and it's it's a godsend, it really is, because uh, I've been doing all sorts of different bits of work at the minute just to, to make ends meet. So yeah, it's great to get the sport work back. And it was great to hear the fans yesterday as well. What a buzz that was. Great, great uh, set of fans at Nottingham Forest. And actually I sat I sat at the away end opposite the Bournemouth fans, so it, was, it, was, it made me feel at home again a bit listening to their chants, because that's all I've been listening to for the last three or four years down at Bournemouth, so yeah, great. Anyway, I'm babbling on. I hope you enjoyed that Tide and Time edit. It's a Tide and Time bell edit. It's only a, only a really quick edit, but um, yeah, I hope that's answered a few of your questions. And do go and check out Biff Fernan's video on, on the construction of it and the designing of it and why it's there. Really interesting video, so go and check that out. And uh, yeah, brilliant. Well, have a great week, guys. Hopefully, I'll get out this week and, and make a vlog. Not sure if I'm going to go down the coast again, again yet or not. I have noticed that there's a few leaves turning uh, in the woodlands, so not long now, we'll start to get a bit of colour. But um, I've got a harvest video to go and film as well, so I might do a harvest vlog in, in the week, perhaps if we can get some nice conditions. Hopefully, get some nice silhouettes of the combines and that. But anyway, plenty of stuff to come up. So, uh, yeah, thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Do remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed that and uh, do consider subscribing for more of the same content. And brilliant, have a great week and I'll catch up next Sunday. Thanks for watching guys, take care, catch up soon.